Okay, welcome back to video four. This is part two of our settings and symbols videos, and this is going to continue on from the previous one. So if you haven't watched the other video on setting yet, make sure you do that before we continue. So I'm going to jump straight back in. Now, a reminder to you that everything that's in yellow needs to be answered in your book. So as well as the notes that you'll take down for each slide, if there's something in yellow, that's a question, and that needs to be written down as well. So last time, you had to write down three dot points about the knife, the deliberation room, and the washroom. So in this video, we're going to go through each of those in more detail. So let's start with the knife. So on the surface, really the knife is just that. It's a weapon in the murder case against the boy. We know that he used one, that the store owner identified it as something quite unique that he'd never seen before, but as we read in the play, juror number eight actually brought one in exactly the same. Now this actually starts the really deep discussion about the not guilty verdicts and how much doubt is needed to actually come to that decision. And it is quite a dramatic moment when Juror 8 finds another one of a kind. So the questions you're going to ask for this is why is it really important to the case that there was another one of a kind, so it's not just that one knife that was used in the murder, and what message is Rose trying to send with that? So why is that important? And that's something that we call views and values. So if you ever hear your teacher talking about that, we're talking about how it shows the opinion of people and the message that Rose is trying to send. So you're going to pause the video at this point, take down some notes and answer those two questions, and when you come back, we'll move on to the next one. So the room is our next one. Now the room is just that. The point is that it is very simple. There's not a lot on the walls. They've got the window that looks outside. They've got their bathroom or washroom and the door is locked. So they actually physically become trapped in that space. One of the jurors even makes the comment that they didn't think they would lock the door behind them. So this becomes sort of the catalyst for them to start talking because there is nothing else to possibly distract them. Only one or two people can be in the bathroom at any one point, so they are forced to be with each other. So what you're going to do is read the description of the room at the start of the play, and you can make a small sketch or a diagram of what you think it looks like. Now, I know some of you did that when we did our settings activity a few weeks ago, but this time it's I want it in your book with your notes. That way you can go back and look at it. It does not have to be detailed. It does not have to be coloured. It can be a basic bird's eye view diagram if you wish. But I would like you all to have some idea of what the room was like at the start of the play. And under that, I would like you to write down why it is important that the room is bare and they are trapped. Okay. This is our last one. That is the washroom or bathroom. By nature, it is just a small room off of the main room, just like any other bathroom would be. And it allows our jurors to have a little bit of a break from each other. So it lets them calm down, cool off a little bit, maybe keep them away from what's happening inside. And it's going to have a mirror above the bench. Now, if you remember from when the Eagle's Nest came out, they talked about this idea that Juror 8 has this personal realisation in the bathroom. So you could possibly imagine that there is a mirror above that sink. He's staring at himself, looking inside his symbolic soul as to what might actually be happening and whether he's doing the right thing. The other point to make about the washroom is that when people are in there, they cannot hear what's going on in the jury room. So even though the audience can hear what's going on while they're not there, they are isolated. So they may then have limited knowledge or limited understanding of what's being talked about because they have not been in the room. And this changes people's perspectives on the actual deliberation at that point. So your last question for this session is why might Rose have made sure that the small washroom is mentioned in the play? So that is your opinion on it. And I would like a few sentences on that because we are going to start off talking about that question in the next lesson. So make sure you've got down all of those notes from the previous video and from this video. Make sure those questions are answered. And at the bottom of your page, if you have any other questions about anything in this video, you need to write them down and we will go through them in class. So I will see you next lesson. Good luck. Don't forget you can always go back through these videos if there's anything you've missed or anything you want to go over again. And I will see you later.